On today's episode of Locally Grown, we join Christine and Robin at Snug Harbor. Nestled on the North Shore, just a stone's throw from the concrete jungles of New York City and New Jersey, lies the Snug Harbor Cultural Center and Botanic Gardens, a Staten Island landmark for more than a century. Established in the early 19th century as a haven for retired sailors, Snug Harbor's development mirrored that of the rest of the island, expanding into a thriving community that it was home to a diverse group of individuals from every corner of the world. Today, it's an oasis of green, providing a respite for Staten Island residents to come and play, learn, and build a stronger community. At the center of it all is Heritage Farm, a relatively small area with a mission and purpose that are much larger than the plot of land it rests on. During this episode of Locally Grown, Robin and Christine visit with the farm's director, Ezra Pasekow, to talk about the farm's role in providing delicious, locally grown fruits and vegetables while championing sustainably grown food and community service. I'm Robin Lefkowitz, and I'm with Northfield Bank. I'm Christine Dehart, and I'm with Salmon Real Estate. And we are your hosts for Locally Grown. And you're going to see a lot of Staten Island from a historic perspective. And when you come to a place like Snug Harbor, with its 83 acres and its two and a half acres of farm and just coming here and walking around free of charge to come in and anytime you're stressed out, anytime you just want to see nature on Staten Island, this is the place to be. So we're gonna look at some things that are grown locally on the show, Locally Grown. Snug Harbor Cultural Center and Botanic Gardens is more than just a place steeped in local history. Visitors flock the site to see Newhouse Center for Contemporary Art, the New York Chinese Scholar Garden, which includes pavilions and a koi pond, the Music Hall, the second oldest venue of its kind in New York City after Carnegie Hall, the Staten Island Museum, the Children's Museum, and the Noble Museum, and, of course, Heritage Garden. It's focused on soil health through compost, crop rotation, intercropping, and cover cropping make it a model of sustainable farming. In 2021, the farm grew more than 22,000 pounds of produce and donated around 4,000 pounds of produce to community partners. So this is a small part of Snug Harbor Cultural Center and Botanic Gardens, and I believe it's 80 acres in total. Yeah, so the whole campus is 83 acres. Here on the Heritage Farm, we have two and a half acres under production. And so we have this large fence that helps keep the deer out. And uh, that's our footprint that we have on this property to be able to grow as much food as possible. So right now you're looking at different direct sowed crops. So that means we have a little machine that puts the seeds directly into the soil and they're still pretty small. Right. These were planted maybe seven to 10 days ago, um, but you can see all our fall greens coming up. So you have spinach, salad mix, um, head lettuce and mustard greens are all greens that we're going to be selling in probably two to three weeks but right now they're still baby sized and so we do our best to keep them in straight lines keep them in in order so then it's easier to weed and easier to harvest um, but this is that little section that you're looking at right now crops such as scallions or baby onions are just a few of the items getting ready for the harvest the tasty plants were still a few weeks away but already looked delicious right here you can see We've got our beets coming along. That's what I wanted. That's what I'm coming back for Thursday. Perfect. So these are our red uh, Subeto beets is the variety that it's called. Uh, we've had a lot of success. I'd say this is the best crop that we've grown this season. Our beets just for some reason really love the dry heat that we've had and they've taken off. And so I'm really proud of the, the crop that we have here. And we've been harvesting them pretty much every week for the last 20 weeks. One technique used at the farm calls for crops to be planted at seven to 21 day intervals. It helps farmers keep a steady supply of harvestable produce. That means there's only a few precious weeks when something isn't coming out of the ground. So that's succession planning and planting in where we're constantly looking at the lifespan of a plant and knowing that if I'm gonna harvest today, I wanna to harvest next week at the same time. So that means 40 days ago and 50 days ago, I'm constantly planting new things. And so we have heavy fruiters like tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, those things you plant once a year, right? You plant, you start the seeds early in March, you get them out in the field in May, and then we're harvesting hopefully for as many months as possible, where some of these more delicate or quicker growing plants we're constantly seeding from March, essentially, all the way until October. Yeah. How did you get into this? Because you're like very excited about it. <laughs> it's exciting to share. So I'm originally from Vermont and have always had an interest in working outdoors and working with my hands. I knew that an office job was not gonna be suitable for my energy and my what I was looking to do. 
And so I studied some ecology and some small scale farming classes in college and really fell in love with it. And then I moved to Latin America and I lived in Mexico and Guatemala for just under two years and worked on different farms there and got a lot of great experience learning about a different growing climate. It's tropical there. So a lot of the crops we had there, we can't grow here in New York. Um, but that really stemmed a passion for me or, or created a passion for me to be in small scale agriculture. Heritage Farm also plays a vital role in feeding the community. With 99% of the crops saying within the North Shore, its produce goes to three places, including the CSA or Community Supported Agriculture. It's a share. More than 70 families buy into it each week to receive fresh produce from June to October. All of it was grown right here on the farm. Produce also can be purchased at one of the three seasonal farm stands. After that, it stays on the island, or majority stays on the island, um, and will be donated to different food pantries. So we work with Chazzy, Project Hospitality, Beit al Jamaat, uh, Catholic Charities, and mostly this season we've been working with El Centro. And so that's where, again, about 200 to 300 pounds of produce a week is going to their local food pantry. Another sign that Heritage Farm is deeply involved in the community is its reliance on volunteers and its commitment to helping young people prepare for careers. The farm has a seasonal staff that works from March to November, as well as volunteers. Something Ezra is most proud of is the farm's workforce development program. This summer we had a lot of success with the Summer Youth Employment Program, where Snug Harbor as a whole hosted over 80 young adults and gave them for six weeks job opportunities throughout the organization. So they worked with the farm, they worked with horticulture, housekeeping, visitor services, and our education team to be able to get those job readiness skills while also being paid. So the farm benefited immensely from this young group of young adults who had some experience or no experience growing food but had a passion and they were able to do that and then take veggies home to their families and each day I felt like they came back and were more excited and more eager to sweat it out on a hot day and be able to see what it's like to grow food and understand that when they're eating three meals a day there's somebody or a lot of people's hands went into that hard work. I wonder if they eat vegetables now where they didn't. I hope they Are do. Are their parents I, thanking you? I, you know, I, that's I, a good I, point <laughs> because you know you get an appreciation when you see it you feel it and you learn about it and I agree I bet you people are being exposed to vegetables they may never have seen before. Absolutely or they look different because they haven't been chopped up and prepared in a in a something that in you see bag. in a grocery store in a bag right. but to be able to pull a carrot out of the ground and see all the dirt on it and go wait that's a carrot I can eat that let's brush that off with the hose and then I can eat that right there that's a really great experience and seeing that in young adults or young kids or even adults who haven't had experience I mean we're in New York City how many farms are there and of course there's no shortage of things to taste try and cook Awesome. So these are picnic peppers, or they're some kind, sometimes called lunchbox peppers. Yeah, they're one of our top them. sellers. They're delicious. Yeah. I can't, they never make it home with me. I'm always eating them on my way. So home. is that what you do? You keep yourself like a little, uh, <laughs> I use these all the time. Tray of food. So this way, while you're working, you could just be munching <laughs> yeah, also. Yeah, it, it's a perk. It's a perk definitely of the job of being able to enjoy fresh veggies. But yeah, when we're harvesting, and when you kind of get sick and tired when you've got 60 pounds of peppers that you're dragging along with sure. you, you're kind of done eating. Ezra and the team at Stug Harbor also pride themselves on their sustainable farming practices. A big part of that is composting, which is one way that Staten Islanders can actually help grow their delicious fruits and vegetables. This is, it's less about what we don't use. It's really good. Good, that's good to hear. I it's, I yeah, you might as well it, try right? it. Yeah. It's, it's less about what we don't use and more about the practices that we do use. And so one of our partnerships is with the Department of Sanitation's Bureau of Recycling and Sustainability, where we are collecting food scraps from the public on a daily basis and turning that into compost and then spreading that compost onto our fields. About 40% of residential waste is compostable material, including much of the table scraps left on any dining room table or kitchen table. Nearly all of it could be turned into compost. And to make things easy for those who want to help, Snug Harbor has 15 drop-off sites throughout Staten Island, from the North Shore to the South Shore, including one that's open from dusk till dawn on site. 
So tell us how would somebody preserve their scraps? Yeah, the so this best way they're not stinking up their exactly. house. Exactly, your food scraps smell, but the best way to do it is the same thing is what I do. I put it in a Ziploc bag and I put it in my freezer. And then when it's full and I'm ready to bring it back to the farm or a food scrap drop off site, I'm able to bring that here. It stays frozen and then our team deals with it with machines and turns it into compost. So every day you take out a Ziploc, you scrape off whatever, seal it up, put it in your freezer, and the next day you take the same, same bag. Same Ziploc, exactly. That makes it easy to do. It makes it easy. I'm right. able to reuse my Ziploc, so there's less waste there. Right. And then I, you know, it takes me a week to fill up a full bag, and then I bring it to the farm and, and we're able to comp compost it. Sure, and think about it. There's families out there that, you know, there's pieces of bread, mm -hmm. there's extra spaghetti, there's, yep. I mean, all of that goes yeah. in our garbage now, and that could really be helping sustained Grow food. All this food yeah yeah absolutely so we don't take plastic obviously that's right. not compostable and we don't take meat or bones but really other than that we're able to process you know cooked foods and, and leftovers and veggie scraps well actually i'm glad you mentioned meat because i'm thinking like pieces yeah. of hamburger or meatballs or whatever that's in your garbage yeah that you're so kind of scraping so off. just the scale that we're at we're right. considered a mid-size compost facility for the uh, city of new york so we're just not quite big enough to be able to compost uh, meat scraps, but really anything else we're able so to So the do. meat goes to the dogs, the, the vegetable scraps go exactly. to the Exactly, and the plastic goes to the landfill. So I think this was amazing. Did you not have a great day here? This was an awesome day. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And don't forget to come to Snug Harbor because you too can enjoy this wonderful place on Staten Island, right in our own backyards. Peppers, <laughs> my green onion, my half eaten the start of dinner. Yeah. You've got a beet. Oh, wow. We can beet. get you some cherry tomatoes. Yes, and oh, there awesome. you go. Call it a so day. I gotta get some tomatoes and bring them down to the seaside. We're gonna test the Jersey Jerry's farm stand tomatoes against snow carpets. We're gonna see which one's a better. All right. <laughs> I know where I'm putting my money. Okay. Oh, that's good.